it's very strange. Yeah, it's 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 like all of a sudden there's people that sort of quite like you and um, think you're great and gorgeous when actually, you know, I'm not really. And that feeling the yeah. last time you walked down the Strand towards the theatre mm. and it was no longer going to be you in it. Can you explain how that felt? Oh yeah, it was it was a sad day, obviously. Uh, to to not play the, play the role anymore, but um, I wasn't going to miss the loincloth though. I'll, I'll be honest. Not even in your most private I'm, I'm of moments. I'm sorry if I've sh- if I shed tears there, but <laughs> I was, I was uh, happy to put on some weight again and not worry about my six pack. Yeah. Brave step leaving Joseph, but it had to happen someday. You couldn't be doing that when you were ninety, could you? No. Well, I, I got asked to stay for another six months, which was very flattering. But I thought, you know, I've, I've done a year and a half run. The program was six months as well. And uh, like like everyone, you, you want to have a new challenge and, and move forward and, and try new things. And, that, and that's partly why I left at the start of the year, really, as well. I thought, start afresh. So. And, of course, you started on reality TV, but you'd had a life before that, and you'd worked <laughs> hard. People seem to think you can suddenly go into this and become Joseph in a heartbeat. Actually, you'd done years of prep. Tell us about some of the things you'd been in. Uh, I've done Phantom of the Opera, Miss Saigon. Um, I did a rock show called Tommy. I did the tour of Joseph about five years ago when I was a, I was a brother for uh, Bill Kenwright, um, which is a different production company at the time, and a lot of cabaret. And yes, yeah, so I've, I've been grafting for about seven, eight, eight years prior to the audition for the programme. When you say cabaret, mm. are we talking working cabaret. men's clubs or are we talking, you know, the, the height of show business? We're talking summer seasons in uh, Yorkshire and uh, down south and all across the country. And some of the shows are very hard because there'll be like sort of 20 people in a theatre full of which has a capacity of about 2,000 so. mm. and now of course you're the star you're no longer the reality man or the man entertaining the pensioners on summer season mm. um, how do you like that are you shy would you rather not be talking to me now and just let the CD be playing or are you more comfortable doing this uh, I've, I've become more comfortable yeah I mean it's part of the job really you have to get used to talking to people and promoting your album but I think a lot of performers would be lying if they said that they uh, you know loved being them, being themselves on, on on camera or or doing interviews and chats because part of what we do is it's hiding behind somebody or something, isn't it? Like a yeah, song or a character. Mm. So it did take me a few months to get used to interviews and, and talking openly about about personal stuff. So it's, lots of people listen, you're listening and you know and watch. So uh, but it's just being more comfortable with yourself, really. But it's um, it can be odd, yeah. Help me with this thing that everybody feels they have the right to know everything about you because you're in the limelight. We mm. need to see you in the papers. Do you think the two go together that actually that's something you're having to give up? You want the big money. You want the albums. You want the West End. We've got to know everything about you. Well, yeah, there's, there's a line, isn't there, I think? I mean, yeah, it's, it's my choice to go on TV and um, be seen by million, millions of people. So you can't expect to moan and kind of, you know ignore people in the street because that would be wrong and, and a lot of celebrities and people do that which I think is terrible um, but also at the same time I think I'm entitled to a level, level of privacy and um, which is important as well but uh, I'm, I'm always quite open to talk to people though you know, have a chat and... It's tricky though isn't it and that feeling yeah. of when you open the paper and you're there and you didn't know that that picture was being taken know, is there any way of explaining that? It's, it's very odd very odd especially when you're on the beach and, and you're trying to relax the belly and have a couple of beers and then, you, and then all of a sudden you're in some magazine. And I've got, of course, to ask you about Denise Van Outen, your new wife. Uh, tell me, did you ask her to marry you? I did. I, th- I think I'd, I'd be shot if I didn't, you know, ask the question, actually. It's uh, I'm quite traditional in that sense. And, um, yeah, I got down on one knee in our, in our home and she said yes straight away, which was lovely. So Were you a bit yeah. nervous that she might say no? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I, I'd be lying if I, said, if I said I wasn't. I think any guy would be, wouldn't they? But um, she said yes, so the nerves went. Now, somebody tells me on the grapevine that Norman Wisdom is one of your heroes. Is that true? One of my heroes, yeah. Hmm. Can you do an impression? It's a grim style. That was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> there we go. Yes, yo, don't laugh at me, because I'm a fool. Yeah. I'm just going to put a phone into my lawyer. Get, I, I, get the rights to Norman Wisdom, the musical. We've got the star. Oh, God. Can you imagine that? It might, it might be a hit, though. You never know. We'll see. Do you have many demands on tour? Demands? Not at all. Oh, fun, funny enough, I did, uh, I've been asked to do some signings this year. I got a funny call from my agent saying, what would you request for your dressing room? You know, doing some fruit or would you like this and that? And I just mm. said, a bottle of water is fine for me. You're just too nice. It's just, I, I don't understand these divas that um, 
you know, what want posters of themselves plastered around the room and, you know, white kittens and that kind of... I can understand, though, if you're in a show and somebody cocks up and it's their fault and they make you look stupid why you'd get upset, do you ever get involved in that or do you just have to let it go? I'll, I'll be having a word afterwards, yeah. <laughs> I, I won't lie to you. <laughs> I'll be saying... What? Dave, what's going on? <laughs> Stop snoring. But, but, but gen- generally, they're, they're, they're always on it. So uh, How fed up must those technical people be after 7,000 shows? It's a hard shows? job. <laughs> There's a guy called Ben, actually, that, that with a beer often after the show. He um he did the spot, the spot in, in the show. I mean, we did 600 performances in total. And, and you do wonder if they ever feel like dozing off at some point. Oh, <laughs> he must be sick of seeing you. Thank you. <laughs> Lee Me, top star. Thank you for coming on the big show. And uh, I'll see you very soon. Thanks, fella. See you soon, man.